Let's next look at prokaryotic versus eukaryotic ribosomes. After all, you're always going to need to distinguish between these two on the exam. So, the first thing I want to keep you to keep in mind is that S is not equivalent with molecular weight. What S means is a Svedberg unit, and it's simply a sedimentation coefficient. So you'll notice that, for example, in the prokaryotes, the 50S and the 30S ribosomes come together to make the 70S complete ribosomal subunit. Some of you may be thinking, but that doesn't make sense. 50 plus 30 should be 80. Well, like I said, this is not additive. It's simply a sedimentation coefficient. So there's a little bit of arbitrary uh, designation that goes in here. Now, in the eukaryotic ribosome, there's a 60 and 40S ribosomal subunit that come together to make an 80S ribosomal subunit. Once again, not additive. Here's a good way for you to remember. The prokaryotic ribosomal subunits all start with an odd number. So bacteria are odd, weird little creatures. Prokaryotic bacteria. So they start with an odd number. So the 70S ribosome, complete ribosome, is subdivided into a 50, starts with a 5, and a 30 starts with a 3, 30S ribosomal subunits. Whereas the eukaryotes, they start with an even number. So eukaryotes are even. The complete ribosome is 80S, subdivided into a 60S and 40S ribosome. So going back over here to the prokaryotic ribosome, you can take the large 50S ribosomal subunit and then further subdivide into a 5S and 23S ribosomal RNA it's not that critical that you remember those RNA species. It's more important that you remember the large ribosomal subunit is 50S, the small ribosomal subunit is 30S. One key ribosomal RNA that would be worth remembering is the 16S ribosomal RNA of the 30S ribosomal subunit of prokaryotes. Why is this important? It's because the 16S ribosomal RNA is going to be what binds to the shine dalgarno sequence and gets translation initiated within the prokaryote. So the 16S ribosomal RNA will complementarily base pair with the shine dalgarno sequence. Remember where that is? It's in the 5' prime untranslated region of each and every prokaryotic messenger RNA. So the binding of those two together helps get the mRNA in the proper location of the ribosome so that translation can be initiated. Moving over to the eukaryotic ribosome, the large 60S ribosomal subunit is subdivided into a 5S, a 28S, and then a 5.8S ribosomal RNA species. So there's a subdivision that goes on here. Once again, I wouldn't spend too much time worrying about all of these ribosomal RNA species. The one thing I would remember is that all ribosomal RNA is made by RNA polymerase 1 with the exception of this little guy right here. 5S ribosomal RNA is made by RNA polymerase 3. Okay, now the 18S ribosomal RNA is the main one that makes up the small ribosomal, small 40S ribosomal subunit, and it's the, uh, the entire ribosomal subunit itself that's going to be recognized by the cap on the, uh, the messenger RNA. So along comes the messenger RNA, the ribosome is going to look for where to bind. It doesn't bind to the 18S, it binds to the entire cap. The, the, pardon me, the entire, the cap binds to the entire small ribosomal subunit itself. So although this is in, uh, drawn on a piece of paper, this looks very two-dimensional, in reality what a ribosome is, is a mixture of RNA, ribosomal RNA, and a bunch of proteins that are going to bind to that RNA. And that gives a nice three-dimensional confirmation, and that's what creates the organelle, the ribosome, which is going to synthesize protein from the messenger RNA. So the key features here, once again, the prokaryotic ribosomes, 70S is the complete, divided into a 50 and 30S large and small respectively subunit. The eukaryotic ribosome is a complete 80S ribosome subdivided into a large 60 and a small 40S ribosome. 
What initiates translation in prokaryotes? It's binding of the 16S ribosomal RNA to the shine dalgarno sequence. What initiates translation in eukaryotes? It's binding of the complete small 40S ribosomal subunit to the cap on the messenger RNA. I should further note that it's going to be very important that you learn the antibiotics that bind to and inhibit protein synthesis in prokaryotes. So there's going to be certain antibiotics that block and bind the 50S ribosomal subunit and other antibiotics that block and bind the 30S ribosomal subunit. We'll review some of these a little bit later on.